Good morning, everybody. We're here pouring the 60 by 40 house through the garage and the front patio yesterday. 60 by 40, four inches thick. We got our regular mix, 3,500. Got high range water reducer in it today so we can pour it nice and loose. Everything's flat, everything's gonna get covered. So we just basically gotta put the floor in, power trowel it smooth, saw cut it today, and then we'll be done. Got two inches of styrofoam under the floor. They got radiant heat in the floor. And then, you know, of course, all the plumbing and stuff on the floor. So it's just going to be a single family building. So we're going to get at it here. We've got a good crew. We've got Harvey helping us today. We've got our, our new guy there, the high school kid, Luke, helping us today. Now, this is one of those jobs where we get subcontracted out just to do the concrete floors. So this company, the foundation company, hires us just for labor to come in and pour, finish, and saw cut the floor for today. And we do we do all their floors. They do a ton of residential foundations. I don't know how many they do in a year, but it's a lot. And they sub us out on all their floors, the residential stuff. They do a bunch of big commercial stuff too. And, you know, I, I used to do that stuff years ago. I don't really want to do the commercial stuff anymore. So we just do all the residential stuff. And they're one of our bigger clients. This is a pretty typical job. And, you know, most days, if they had the house ready, we would have done the garage, the house, and the patio all in one day. But yesterday, when, when we did the garage and the patio, they were still working on putting the radiant tubing in the house. So we decided just to, you know, get the garage and the patio done and then come back the next day and do the house. And one of the reasons we decided that was, like I said, uh, like I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit later in the video, but this concrete company that we have delivering the concrete today is a little bit short on drivers. So, you know, it's been get, it's been tough trying to get more than say three or four trucks on one pour. You really gotta line stuff up well in advance because honestly, they just don't have the drivers to drive all the trucks. It wasn't very long ago, it was just like a couple years ago, they had about nine or 10 drivers at this one plant. Now they're down to like three or four. So they got a bunch of empty concrete trucks just sitting in the yard. Luckily, you know, we he puts us down for at least a couple trucks every single day. And then on a job like this, if we need more than two trucks, I got to give him a little bit of notice so he can plan on that in his schedule. But it's, it's usually not really a problem. If we have to, you know, instead of starting at 6.30 or 7 in the morning, we could start an hour earlier. We could say you have Crete on the job at 5.30. And then that gets the trucks back in him in time so he can still deliver concrete to other people, you know, if he if he's telling them 7 or 7.30. I, I don't care what time we start. It, you know, if it could be dark in the morning, as long as we can get our pours in, that's all that matters to me because, you know, this is basically what we do. One of the things we do every day is just pour concrete. And so it's like we're pouring concrete every single day. And I feel like, you know that's that's our bread and butter we're making money when we're pouring concrete if we're not pouring concrete we're not really making money although that's not entirely true because i mean we do get we do charge to do you know forming up slabs and getting stuff ready but it just seems like you know hey if we need to keep up with all these other guys that hire us to pour concrete too so it's it's important that we pour concrete every single day that we can in maine you know, the season really starts usually in sometime in April when things start warming up. Everything starts melting off. The 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 ground unthaws and we can start getting out and pouring stuff on, you know, unthawed ground. So in April, we can usually start doing that towards the middle, middle of the end of April. And then that season for us lasts usually through November it'll last, sometimes even into the 1st of December. So, you know, you want to talk about a short season, that's about eight months of spring, summer, fall, and winter, four seasons of different types of concrete. Now from December on, December, January, February, and March, we still pour, we still work. The conditions have to be just right though. Sometimes it's outside. If you know, these guys can get the jobs done, keep the ground from freezing by either covering them with blankets, and then we get a decent day, let's say in the 30s or maybe even the low 40s, we can pour outside. Or, you know, there's, there's quite a few cases in the winter where 
the the foundation will be in late in the fall. They'll build it, cap it over or whatever, and then make sure everything's unthawed, and then they can put heat in it, and then we can pour, you know, undercover when it's heated, put up some lights or whatever. So we still pour, but just nowhere near as frequently as, as we do in those, let's say, those eight months of our regular season. So that's why, you know, we don't like to miss a day for anything, especially, you know, s- stuff when you can't get a concrete truck <laughs> because there just aren't that many. So we'll start at whatever time we need to in the morning because of that for a lot of reasons. You know we're going to miss some days just because of weather. So we got quite a bit of stuff going on. You know, Darren's over there on the left. He's screeding in around those pipes with a smaller screed. I'm screeding right there down the middle with the, with the vibrating screed. Luke's kind of puddling behind me. We're getting that second truck mixed up, starting to dump him out, and then Harvey's boat floating. So it's that's what's nice about having a you know a six man crew. You can pour a lot of concrete if everybody knows what they're doing and get a lot of concrete down really fast. Now this this is I know it's sixty by forty, so it's twenty four hundred square feet. Now that's not really that big to us. It's it's a good size house, but as far as like like pouring flat concrete floors, that's really not that that big. It's you know average an average size for a for a small crew like this so getting it down quick is is really key well the reason one of the reasons we like to get it down quick you can see we're still in the shade the sun's coming up over the trees and usually in the middle of the summer the sun comes up fairly quick so we want to get this thing in as fast as we can hopefully before the sun comes up and really starts heating things up that way we have a little bit of time in between getting the concrete poured both floated and then power trial on this thing we can you know just take a little bit of a break rather than having to jump right back on this power trial one everything's going pretty smoothly so far now the the third truck so this is the second truck I believe I said it was 31 and a half yards so that's three trucks when we're using these rear dumps they can each hold about 10 and a half yards so that's, they're just about maxed out and what we don't want to do is run out because the guy that's actually doing the batching is the guy that's driving the third truck. He actually jumped in a truck today. So we wouldn't have to wait for a balance load either from the first guy that went back or from another concrete plant, you know, delivering delivering from a different plant that's further away. His name's Dave. So Dave batched the first trucks out. Then he backs the third truck under himself, batches himself, drives it out there and then unloads it as you'll see here shortly you know he unloads it for us then he drives back and and then he can start loading for the other whatever other loads he has going out today that really helps us out now what we're doing is we're moving that second truck around to the back side and we're getting this area this bay here prep for the the vibrating screed I get the, you know, I'll go around all the pipes and stuff with, with the laser and the receiver and the, you know, my receiver stick, just making sure grade is really good around all the pipes. As a matter of fact, that's what Darren's doing right now. We're trying to get that second truck truck dumped out so he can he can wash out and get back to the plant, and then we'll grab the screed and come down this one side. Harvey's over there magging the edges. What makes some of these jobs easier when they're when they're we call these top of wall slabs like this, so the floor is just matching the top of the wall, and that gives us you know our outside grade to go by, and then on the inside all the grades we always use a we always use a battery operated self leveling laser that's set right even with the top of the concrete wall. And then we can go around and make pads, you know, wet what we call wet pads, just about anywhere we want. Now the board on our vibrating screed is 12 feet wide, so we got to make sure that you know the area we're trying to screed isn't any wider than say you know 10 and a half or 11 feet. So the ends, the ends of the vibrating screed can rest on the grade pads that we're striking right now. You'll see here in a second. So we'll go around, we'll strike, 
all our pads that way, using by hand. It's just that's the way we like to do it. We could use the vibrating screen to do that too, but we like to be super, super accurate. And there's just no really no margin for error when you get two guys screening by hand that really know what they're doing, that are really experienced. They're going to get that floor super flat. So as you can see, Luke's now using the vibrating screed and the ends of the screed need to be resting on some type of pad, some type of grade as you as you screed this so you know the floor is flat. If you're not resting those two ends on a, on some type of pad, I mean, you, I don't know. Some guys, I've seen some guys do that. I don't know how they get the floors flat. I guess, I guess they're probably not that flat, <laughs> you know. Having done this for years and years and years, knowing that it's very easy to get a little tiny hump or a little dip in the floor if you don't know what you're going by. But when you do have something to go by, like Luke is looking at right now, it actually makes using one of these one of these uh, power screeds pretty easy to use. You can see how nice and easy that stuff just pulls down. Especially when you got a couple really good breakers behind you. All right, let's hope that we finish. Man, we don't want to run out today. They're really short on trucks today. They only got these three trucks at this plant. They had to ship the other ones out to different plants because of how busy they are. Normally, they got six trucks. wraparound view there <laughs> give you a little different angle to look at there's a lot of you can, as you can see there's a lot of pipes and you know bat I guess bathrooms or kitchen I don't know how many but we don't really get the floor plan of this you know we just basically get a text saying so and so job is ready here's the here's the address usually the size you know and if there, if there are any little details they'll put a little a few little details in the text and then what I do is you know I put all those texts together and then I'll go look at the jobs I usually have to get everything lined up I'll line up the concrete if we need a pump I'll line up the pump and I that way I can keep keep track of my schedule and get everything lined up according to you know what days we want to do what sometimes if two jobs are really close by we can squeeze in two jobs on the same day and that makes lining things up a little bit easier but a lot of these jobs like this job right here is about a 30 minute ride from the shop I'd consider that like you know between probably between average we don't get too too many jobs right in our own little town so a lot of jobs we'll have to drive 30 to 60 minutes is pretty normal for us We'll go, there's, there's a lot of jobs that are even further than that, that, you know, if, the, if they're our regular customer, like these guys right here, these foundation guys, they'll go all over. Sometimes they'll go, you know, two, two and a half hours from their home location to do foundations. And if that's the case, usually we'll follow them and do the floors. You know, we'll get extra for travel time and stuff like that, but we, we like to keep our regular customers happy and not have them have to search for other people, which can be hard. So, but most of our jobs, I'd say, are between a 30-minute drive and probably an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes. That's a pretty normal day for us. If it's under 30 minutes, we consider that a bonus for us. I know a lot of you guys probably don't go any further than 30 minutes away from your shop and... I mean that that would be really cool if that's if that's all we had to do was drive less than 30 minutes every single day. But because we're kind of you know Maine's kind of rural, although we do live in a pretty populated area, we live pretty close to the capital, which is Augusta, Maine, and then in between Lewiston, Auburn, Maine, which probably not many of you guys know, but 
Some of you may have heard of Portland, Maine. We're about an hour north of Portland, Maine, which is one of Maine's biggest cities. And a lot of times, you know, we'll travel, we'll travel down to Portland to work, to do floors just like this. That gives you a good idea of, you know, the two guys, look how, look how much the two guys working behind the screed have to work compared to the guy that's actually pulling the screed. The guy pulling the screed, there's really not much effort there. You just need to, you need to keep it at a certain angle, which is you want to keep that board relatively flat so it's kind of cutting the surface, but you want to make sure it stays the grade. You want to give it, you know, half, three quarters throttle and just the, the, the more you can pull it back without stopping, the better. You don't, you don't really want to stop and start too many times. And just keep evenly pulling that thing back. And that's about the extent of how hard it is to work that power screed. And then when you know, the way, one of the ways you know it's flat is when you can, you know, watch that guy with the bull float right behind. There won't be any little gaps or humps or anything you know, under the bull float, that bull float just glides right over the surface and it looks really flat. Well, that went well, guys. What do you think? It is 7.55. I believe Creek got here maybe just a little bit before seven. So 60 by 40, 31 and a half yards. I know he's, he's got a little bit left in there, so it didn't take all 31 and a half, but it took most of it. Now we just gotta hang out. Yesterday we had to hung, hang out about an hour an hour or so in the garage before we got ready to power trial it. I know we was done yesterday's power trial and sawed. We was out of here before noontime. I suspect today will be even a little bit earlier because it was cloudy yesterday. And it was really humid, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. Today's dry and sunny. It's hot already. So I bet, I bet by, I don't know, 11 o'clock, this thing probably be about done. So anyway, when we get ready to power trial it, we'll be back in touch with you. All right, it's an hour and 40 minutes after we get done pouring, so it's 9.40 right now. Concrete's firm enough to, so we can get on it, hit it for the first time. It's just going to go fast. Once it gets going like this, it's going to go fast on a day like today, so we'll jump right on. we got another power trial back of the truck ready to go. That's Luke running the power trial, and then Darren's up on the skids, kind of mag floating and hand trialing around the pipes and stuff. We like just going around all that stuff by hand. It just makes the job a little easier for the guy running the power trial. And then he doesn't have to stop and do it. Now on a job like a floor like this, 2,400 square feet, I mean, when it's this hot out, usually we'll throw two power trials on it. But we don't usually throw the second one on unless we really need it. So that's why it's sitting there on the tailgate just ready to go when and if Luke says, you know, hey, throw that second one on and just help me get this thing down. But so far, so good. He's he's being able to keep up with it. That's what we like. All right, now 10, 15, second hit. Probably gave it 10 or 15 minutes from when we shut it off after the first hit to starting it back up on this second hit. We'll see if he can keep up with that with one power trial or if we gotta drop that second one on, so. Hard to tell right yet just how it's going to dry, how quick it's going to dry. Usually it snaps off pretty fast. Now as Luke does this second hit, you know, we'll go around, we'll go around and we'll get all his edges for him, get around the pipes and all that. But by the time he gets down to the other end and works his, you know, gets this work for the second time, it's going to be just about ready to hit again back up where he is right now. So, that, you know, there's not much downtime once you get it onto this second hit like this out in the sun when it's, you know, 80, 85 degrees out. A little bit of wind. The, the surface dries up really fast. What's good is, you know, Luke is really, really experienced about running the power trial. So he knows he can hit this in sections kind of like he's doing now according to, you know, how the, how the concrete feels under his feet, how he feels like the surface is drying up. He'll just go in section by section. Plus, he's got all those pipes to go around. So you're gonna ha kind of have to read the floor. You got to get a feel for the floor on just how you feel it's curing up. Instead of just hitting it one way, the same way all the time. And you can kind of see how we he runs that thing in a pattern. We that's just how we run things to keep the floor flat. 
we don't run the trial just just randomly all over the place or the same pattern every single time we hit it we'll cross our pattern and that just helps keep the floor surface flat otherwise if you you know you could you could really mess up a floor as far as getting it what we call wavy if you don't know how to run a power trial the, the right way i can you know down in uh, the concrete underground guys my membership course my membership training I, I teach you how to do all this stuff if any of you guys are interested in learning how to do this concrete stuff like we do you know just check out the concrete underground below but so he goes right from the second hit right to the third hit and then bang here he is on the fourth hit and it's starting to shine out starting to finish up really good you can see it kind of kind of trying to black out a little bit and gloss over that means the floor is done and then he'll take the power trial off Eric's kind of snapping chalk lines out. He got things measured out so we can saw cut our joints. And then uh, we'll get out of here for today. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching.